First on BBC One, more wry observations on life as viewed by Kelly Monteith. Hi, welcome to Kelly Monteith's BBC Memories, and of course I'm Kelly Monteith. One thing about the show, which I also, by the way, uh, co-wrote with um, my co-writer Neil Shand, and um, my producer was, the first two years was James Moyer, and, and there was John Bishop, Kevin Bishop, Helen Gartell, they were all that. We had a very small production staff. You don't need a lot, by the way. This show, it, 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 I broke the fourth wall. I know it, breaking the fourth wall was nothing. I, you know, I was kind of influenced by Jack Benny, uh, George Burns, and a great show called My World and Welcome to It, which the guy would also break the fourth wall. So it's not a unique thing, but I think I, I added a couple of little wrinkles to it because I would use the television a lot to illustrate certain things, and I could do a scene in the television. But I hope you like this one. Uh, it starts out with my monologue, and it goes into a scene uh, shot at this hotel. So roll it. You know, people think hotel living is very glamorous, and it's not. It's not at all. First place, is detrimental to your social life. See, women do not like to go to hotel rooms. They do not. And I treat the hotel room as my home. I mean, if I didn't, I'd go stark raving crazy. So being a nice host, sometimes I'll invite a woman to my home for a drink. Doesn't always mean something's going to happen. Oh, might be in the back of my mind, but you know. <laughs> I'm not one to force an issue. If it happens, it happens. But see, women, they don't like to come to hotel rooms. Because for one thing, you gotta walk through the hotel lobby, right? Now, if you walk a woman through a hotel lobby, people automatically assume the decision has been made. <laughs> Everybody assumes that. Guy behind the desk that gives me the key. <laughs> see the old porter behind the paper in the corner. I always feel like I'm going on a mission for these guys. <laughs> Damn, I better do good. I gotta report back tomorrow. <laughs> and then you get up to the room, see? And you open the door, and there's the bed! The bed just staring at you with these big pillow eyes. <laughs> see if you're gonna take this woman and go <laughs> I mean, it's just so blatant. At least at home, you got a sitting room. Provides you with some sort of psychological foreplay, you know? But hotels... And then the walls are so thin anyway. They're so damn thin, it's just... It's very inhibiting, you know, I mean, even if something happens, people like to express themselves in various ways <laughs> in the heat of passion. And God forbid I'm with a woman that's very vocal about her joy, you know. Woo! <laughs> when we get in the room. And the guy next door is going crazy. Now I got off, I got kids in here. <laughs> And they see us the next day in the lobby. That's the one, that's the one. <laughs> it's so easy to spot. I come down wearing old Levi's and sneakers and a sweatshirt, and a girl has on a cocktail dress, you see. <laughs> Having breakfast in the hotel dining room in a cocktail dress. Perfectly normal, doesn't everybody? <laughs> see, I forgot about that, being single. I forgot about, well, if you kind of fool around outside the house, you got to wear the same clothes home that you wore the night before. Nothing worse than going home at seven in the morning in a dinner jacket. <laughs> there is something worse. Going home at seven in the morning in a dinner jacket on the bus. <laughs> I'll take a dinner jacket any time compared to what I had to wear home once, so. I was at this party, and I met this girl, and we really hit it off. You know, one of those things, you know how it happens. Boom, all of a sudden, everything happens. And we ended up back at her hotel room, and the next morning, I had to get up, and I had to put on the same clothes that I had on the night before at the party, which was okay, except it happened to be a fancy dress party. And I had to walk into a busy hotel dressed as a tomato. <laughs> That's why I left my car key with the night porter. Might have warned the day porter about this tomato that was driving the Ford Cortinas. No such luck. 
Yes, very good, sir. Yes, goodbye. It isn't until 11.30, sir. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> uh, could I have my car keys, please? Room number? Uh, well, I don't have a room. Oh, of course you don't. You live in a grow bag, sir. Tossing the salad, were we, perhaps? Or, or just getting stewed? <laughs> I think that's him right over there. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, if an onion asks for me, would you tell her that I went home? <laughs> I drove home in mortal fear of getting a puncture, or even worse, being stopped by a cop. Much better, I saw there somebody else who looked even more stupid than me. I should come back dressed as a tomato, but um, you have no idea how, uh, not embarrassing, because I do comedy, but to walk through a hotel lobby dressed as a tomato is, uh, <laughs> is uh, something you would think of when you were really high on weed, <laughs> basically. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm Kelly Monteith, and uh, that was Kelly Monteith's BBC Memories. And I hope you'll watch uh, next week when we have some more clips for you. And I hope you got a couple of laughs watching this, wherever you are in the world, uh, whatever time of day or night it is. So we'll see you next week, okay? Good night, or good day. And don't miss Kelly Monteith's new comedy series, The Real Geezers of Beverly Hills, Adjacent. What? I have another series? That's right, Kelly, you do. Only on Amazon. Oh my God. I gotta tell Mom. <laughs> <laughs>